Welcome into the On3 Studios here in Nashville, Tennessee. Today is Sunday, June 9th, and we got a loaded show official visit weekend taking place all over the country. Some major developments to talk about today on the Inside Scoop. But before we get into it, make sure you are subscribed to the best recruiting channel on YouTube, On3 Recruits channel, of course. Thank you guys for being here on today's show. We're going to talk some USC recruiting. Juju Lewis was on campus. We're going to talk some Georgia recruiting, some Miami recruiting, Texas, USC. But first, there's already been some big commitments this weekend that we got to talk about. And here it is. Fahim Delaney at the top, the number three safety in the country, committed to Ohio State. Now, he's a huge get because he goes 6'2", 210. He's out of good council high school in the DMV, but Oregon, Alabama, LSU, Virginia Tech, Texas, Maryland, they were all coming after him, but he commits to Ohio State and shuts it down this weekend. Now, Edge Hayden Lowe, he just committed on Sunday to USC. He's the number 24 ranked Edge in the country. He's a four-star prospect right out of L.A., commits to the hometown team on a big official visit weekend. We're going to talk more about that in a minute. Then you got cornerback Chuck McDonald, another one from California, committing to Alabama. That modern day to Tuscaloosa pipeline is strong. Chuck McDonald, top 10 corner in this class, is now committed to Alabama. Let's not forget about Auburn. Auburn picks up a huge commitment from the number 13 ranked offensive tackle in the country. It is the fifth offensive line commitment of the cycle for the Tigers. Now, remember last year, we had Jeffrey Lee on this show a bunch, and we were talking late into July, into August, that Auburn hadn't landed an offensive lineman yet. Schull is not only the fifth, but he is the highest rated offensive line commitment in this class. A nice pickup at 6'5 and a half, 275 pounds out of Bixby, Oklahoma. He's out of Oklahoma. So, again, Four big commitments. There's much more to come. It's Sunday. We're taping this show late afternoon. Hey, maybe by the end of the show, there could be a couple more big names off the board. All right. Like I said, we got a big one today. We're going to talk USC and Texas in a minute, but let's get it started with some Georgia and Miami recruiting updates. It was a big weekend in Athens, but honestly, the fireworks got started before the weekend because on Wednesday, UGA landed the five-star linebacker, Zayden Walker. Not just any five-star linebacker. The number one linebacker in America, but yet another big visit weekend was on tap, and we're gonna get we're gonna break it all down. I got on three Steve Wiltfong here to give up the five star Georgia Intel. But first, UGA fans, make sure you guys are subscribed to the best recruiting channel on YouTube, on three recruits. All right, let's bring on Steve Wiltfong. Now Georgia landed a commit from the number one linebacker, Zayden, Zayden Walker. But the dogs are not done. Two top targets at the linebacker position on campus this weekend. One Tavian Wallace, one Ty Jackson, number three and number six linebackers, respectively, in America. Uh, what are you hearing coming out of this one? Well, I think George is in the top two, if not at the top of the list for these blue chip second level defenders. Let's start with TJ first. We got a chance to spend time with him and his family at the On3 Elite Series. And he listed about 10 schools that were still squarely in play for him. But I got the sense talking to him and his family, Georgia and Alabama are two schools that I think are real heavy in that one. And then talking to some sources that spent time with him and his family in Athens this weekend, Georgia is in fantastic shape to ultimately land him. This is one of their most coveted targets on the board, regardless of position, track record of development, intensity of the coaching staff. Uh, track record, culture around the locker room are all things catching the prospect in his family's eye. And then with Tavian, Tavian wants to hear his name called in the first round of the NFL draft. It's one of his big goals. And Georgia, they can point towards several linebackers that they've had under Coach Schumann, Coach Kirby Smart and Company that have been drafted extremely high. So I think that's track record of success. His older brother going through it at Kentucky, uh, and hearing his name called in the third round of the NFL draft, they know what it takes to be a Sunday caliber player, and they know George is a place that can get the best out of you. All right, so Steve, just about oh, just over a week ago, we were with Tavian Wallace at the uh, On3 Elite event here in Nashville, and we all kind of felt that Florida State was the perceived leader heading into the summer visits. How are you feeling about Tavian Wallace now that this Georgia visit has taken place? Well, I think Georgia continues to give him a lot to think about. This is not going to be a slam dunk for Florida State, and Florida's in there too. 
And the Gators are having great official visits with some of their top targets. Caleb Cunningham's a five-star receiver that loved his experience this weekend. But back to Tavian, it is not going to be an easy road for Florida State to land him. They've certainly done a great job. They're one of the front runners, if not the front runner, going into this Georgia visit. But the Bulldogs continue to give him a lot to think about. And now he'll take his official visits to Florida and Florida State and go from there. Hmm. All right, now, the big visit of the weekend was number one offensive tackle, David Sanders. After taking an official visit to Clemson, it was George's turn. Now, he's also been to Nebraska and South Carolina as well, but this weekend, much anticipated visit to check out the dogs. How did it go? Well, I'm talking to sources that spent time with David Sanders and his family. That sounds like it went excellent. And Georgia is a school that's always been at or near the top of his list throughout his process. They've been recruiting him for several years now. He's been to games. He's been to practices. He was at the Kirby Smart Scavenger Hunt a few weeks ago, and now he's back for his official visit. Georgia's track record of player development across the board, the intensity of practices, how that program gets the best out of all their players are all things that resonate. Then he also has good friends in that Georgia recruiting class that were on campus this weekend spending time with them as well, so he feels like he fits in with those guys in the locker room. All right. Well, what's up next for David Sanders? So he's got his upcoming official visits to Tennessee, Alabama, and Ohio State. Tennessee, Ohio State, and Georgia are the three programs that I think are in the best shape right now to land David Sanders. That does not mean I'm sleeping on Clemson, but I think Georgia, Ohio State, and Tennessee. And so Tennessee, they've already gotten him on campus three times this calendar year. Ohio State gets the last official visit. That will be his third visit to Ohio State this calendar year. So there's still a lot of things happening in this recruitment. He'll continue to have dialogue with each school and such as it is with almost every other elite prospect in the country, NIL is going to be a factor. So there's a lot of moving parts here still with David Sanders, but I think Georgia checks a lot of the boxes that he's looking for here at this point in this process. And they also continue to make his entire family. They also continue to make his entire family feel at home in Athens and they're making a family decision. Yeah. Well, that's really interesting intel right there. You kind of feel that there's three teams that have edged out in front, but I agree with you. Not going to discount Clemson at this point, but it does feel like those three teams kind of stick out. Um, You did put in a new recruiting prediction machine pick, and not for David Sanders, but for an elite offensive lineman. Dontrell Glover out of Fairburn, Georgia. The four-star was trending to FSU, but this weekend he took that official visit to Athens, and you feel like the – the momentum has now shifted. Yeah, he told me Georgia's his leader, and I, we were kind of feeling that way coming into the visit that Georgia's been trending. He's a guy that's a take right now for Georgia as they try and build one of the elite offensive line classes in the country. And if you look at the photos of him and his mom from his official visit, he looks ready to play for the Bulldogs right now before he goes into his senior year. And he just pointed to two reasons why Georgia's the leader. He talked about their track record of player development, and they win. And he said other programs he canceled official visits to are not considering because they don't check both those boxes. So those are the two more most important things for him. He loved his time in Athens. He says George is the leader coming out. Now they just got to get it to the finish line. All right. Now there was a lot of guys in Athens. We didn't cover them all. Dogs HQ, a wonderful site on our network. They cover all things UGA, both football and recruiting. They did an incredible job of covering this weekend's uh, official visits. So go check that out. Steve, let's talk a little Miami Hurricanes. Now, they had a one of the best prospects in America on campus, Elijah Griffin, the number one defensive lineman in America, the number four prospect overall out of Savannah Christian Prep. And heading into this one, you know, everybody thought UGA was the leader. They're the in-state team. He's the number one defensive lineman in America. But there was a lot of anticipation heading into this Miami visit. What are you hearing afterwards? Well, Miami's going to pull a shocker at some point in this cycle. They have every year since Mario Cristobal's been that football coach, and they've had Elijah Griffin on campus before. They continue to impress with the multiple defensive line coaches that they have. There's no program that's recruiting Elijah Griffin harder than Miami. I think that they have the infrastructure to be attractive for Elijah Griffin and his family as well. So they continue to take their swings and chop wood here. I'm certainly not ready to change my prediction as I talk to you this afternoon about uh, or change it from Georgia to Miami, but Miami would be the program that if you said Elijah Griffin does not go to Georgia, where does he go? I would probably lean Miami right now over South Carolina, Florida, Oregon, Colorado, some of the others that he has shown interest in. 
Yeah, what do you think about Elijah Griffin in his timeline for a decision? I mean, how many more visits does he have left, and when can we expect a final decision from him? Well, he has several more visits on the docket. I expect him to continue to go through his process and take these visits and see what these schools have to offer, sit down with his family, look over all the uh, opportunities that each place presents on the table, then make his decision. I just know this is a guy that Kirby Smart and George and that coaching staff absolutely covet. You're talking about the Justice Terrys, the Isaiah Gibsons, the Elijah Griffins, C.J. Wiley, the wide receiver from Milton, Georgia. Those are guys that they view are able to help them continue to play the caliber of football that they're accustomed to in Athens. So it won't be an easy road for anybody to take Elijah Griffin out of the peach day. <laughs> He's got the same kind of status as the KJ Bolden did last cycle and some others. Elias Williams, who's completely locked in, the five-star tight end from in-state, who was back at Georgia this weekend for a basketball tournament after shutting down his recruitment completely. So George is not going to make it easy on anybody, but we've seen Miami pull off a shocker every year of the Cristobal era, and they'll continue to swing at Elijah Griffin. Yeah, what is it about Mario Cristobal in this kind of uncanny ability to shock the recruiting world, especially when it comes to offensive, defensive linemen? Well, he knows how important those are to make that the foundation of your program. That's the heartbeat of any team that Mario Cristobal leads. He's an offensive line guy at heart, which then – he knows how important it is to be stout at the point of attack. Miami signed the best offensive line class in the country two years ago, highlighted by Francis Goa, Samson Okanlola. They then come back next year and sign the top defensive line in the class, top defensive line hall in the country in the 2024 cycle, uh, led by um, Justin Scott, who they flipped from Ohio State, the five-star. That was their shocker last year. And they're going to keep going at the point of attack with multiple coaches, daily contact, just showing them the trajectory of the program. They've gotten better each year. They're showing these kids the elite recruiting classes. It was a top five recruiting hall last year. And then the blood, sweat, and tears of recruiting, man. Again, no one's communicating more as a head coach than Mario Cristobal. Uh, he's got the support of his coaching staff. Jason Taylor's an electric recruiter with a hellacious, uh, hellacious background to, and resume to his name. And then I think Miami has the infrastructure to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with any of these programs on the trail when you're talking about NIL and things of that nature. Yeah, now all they got to do is put it together on the field, and boy, will this program be cooking. All right, Steve, appreciate you taking time on a busy official visit weekend. Drop it by the Inside Scoop. Thank you. 19 official visitors on campus at USC this weekend. We got a lot to talk about. That's why I'm bringing on Scott Schrade of our of our USC site. He is the insider here at On3 when it comes to all things Trojans. We're going to go behind the scenes of this big official visit weekend at USC. Now, he's also been doing a great job of covering all the action this weekend over at We Are USC. Go check that out. But first, make sure you guys are subscribed to the On3 Recruit Channel, the best site for recruiting info anywhere on YouTube. So go ahead, hit subscribe. All right, thank you. Let's bring on Scott Schrader. Now, Scott phenomenal job covering this craziness at USC this weekend, but you called your shot this morning in an insider piece that you published on your site. You said at least three commitments expected this weekend. And one, at least at the moment that we tape this Hayden Lowe, four-star edge out of LA, he committed. So there's still two more out on the board that you are, you are thinking will end up in USC's commit class. But right now tell us who have you predicted to land in this class from the weekend? I submitted a prediction this morning. It was was for Hayden Lowe. He's a, he's a local defensive lineman from from a really really strong program called Oaks Christian, um, and he's been a guy that you know I wasn't really quite sure where he stood with USC and, until a couple of weeks ago. I, I think Oregon was starting to feel good about him, um, and and USC got him to change his official visit plans from doing it during the season to taking it this weekend. So I put I heard it went really well. Put a prediction in for him. Uh, he just announced, I don't know, what was it, like a half an hour ago? Yeah. Um, and and about an hour or so ago, I put a prediction in for Floyd Bucard from uh, Miami. I think he's from Miami. There's some, some of these guys, actually, I didn't even know USC was that high on um, and how hard they were recruiting guys. So Floyd was one of those guys. Um, so I put a prediction in for him. He was a guy that I had heard they felt really good about. Um, so those are the two predictions right now. Right. Um, I do know that, that they also felt really, really good about um, an offensive lineman, Nick Brooks, from Cedar, Cedar Rapids, Iowa. 
All right. Now, it's always interesting on these official visit weekends at USC. You kind of get a feel for who they are making a priority. And like you said, some of these guys are coming off the board. Now, one name that doesn't need to come off the board. We hope he stays on the board. That's Julian Lewis, the five-star quarterback from Carrollton, Georgia. The USC commitment making his triumphant return for his official visit to USC this weekend. How did it go? What are you hearing coming out of this one? You know, I, I, I'm, I'm honestly, he's actually one guy that I, I haven't had any contact with his dad or him yet. Haven't really hit up anybody you know affiliated with usc to ask about him and i, and I you know it's, it's going to be one of those things to where you know i i want to because it's probably going to learn a lot about what he was able to do with some of the guys i do know he spent time with with the receivers that were there like andrew marsh and Corey sims uh dalen mccutcheon so those were those were big guys that were there also it was romero eisen a, a usc wide receiver commit was was at usc this weekend for his official visit so you know we will hit him up but you know, Juju is is a situation to where you know it's it's been a half a year minimum of of stories about him potentially flipping his commitment. And I'm not saying those stories weren't legit, but I've never once felt like that was something that was imminent. Like you know, we we felt like it might be. Um, so I wasn't really all that concerned about whether he was going to stick with his commitment mm-hmm. or not. So that storyline was kind of like out of my head. But um, you know, I. I do know that that his pop hit me up a couple of times, um, so I know the visit was going extremely well. All right, yeah, you know, and after talking with Juju Lewis here in Nashville for the On3 Elite Series, I feel very confident in his commitment to USC at this point. Yes, he is taking these visits. We'll see ultimately what happens. He told me that some point in July – He plans to completely shut things down. Now, at this point, I got no reason to believe he flips, but just how important is it to have a presence like Juju Lewis on campus for a weekend like this? You know, this is also a a conversation that that I've had with his his father, TC. Um, You know, it's kind of like the receiver situation with recruiting for USC. They're going to need to bring in four or five receivers in this class. And it, it's kind of been kind of creeping along at a really slow pace with, with as far as gaining commitments or or even you know feeling like a, like guys were close to committing. So this weekend, three of USC's top receiver targets were you know, one's committed. So we'll say the targets are now the uncommitted guys were on campus this week. So it mm-hmm. was it was huge that those guys were there. And the feedback that I got from Corey Sims and and from Andrew Marsh so far, you know, they had an opportunity to spend a lot of time with them. And and to them, it's a really big deal that he is a quarterback commit for USC. And I think that that July date, if that happens where he kind of firms things up and is like, yeah, this is it. It's USC. Yeah. I think some guys need to hear that. Yeah, I agree. I, I think it'll help kind of build that offensive class around Juju Lewis. But uh, all right, so we'll catch up with you later this week and get more details on that. But who else from the weekend do you feel like USC made a move on? Or, hey, USC fans should just keep an eye on these prospects. Uh, there, there were three guys that they felt they made a significant move with and, and they're feeling really strong with. And, and that was Dorian Brew, cornerback from Texas, um, Dalen McCutcheon, a wide receiver from Texas, and, mm-hmm. and Andrew Morse also. Um, so those are three guys. And, the, and there's another group of guys that, that they're feeling they're feeling pretty darn good with. And, and that was um, Riley Pettijohn oh, yeah. and uh, Christian, Christian Gass. Um, and those are, those are two other names. And I, and I think there might be a – Another defense. I need you know. This is one of those things that you you want to catch up really really fast, and sometimes sources don't get back to you as fast as you. Hey, would we're like, taping this I on hope- Sunday, my man. I I know by Monday morning you'll have all the juice, <laughs> but we're trying to tape this on Sunday. So yeah, it's a right. work in progress. These guys are still on campus, some of them. I mean, they are. There's a few, correct. So I I just you know I just got a, a text from from. A USC coach, in fact, is about two seconds ago, and it was it was three fire emojis, right? So he's he's all fired up about about the the latest commitment and and where they kind of stand with with defensive line recruiting right now. Um, I don't know if this is a topic we were going to cover, but you know they're in a situation where USC's defensive line coach doesn't want to just doesn't want to sign a good recruiting class. He wants to sign the best one, the best one yeah, ever. You can feel that. So you know. And, and whether that happens or not, you know, it's like, okay, they, it's easier said than done. But at least you know, if you're going after and that, that's what, that, that is your goal to go after guys that will, will take you there. You know, USC hasn't had that for a long, long time. Mm-hmm. So it, it's really kind of made it entertaining for me because they're, they're 
they have a chance with guys I did not think that they would have a year ago. Yeah, really interesting time coming out of this big official visit weekend. USC fans, tap in with us. Comment section below. How you feeling from the weekend? One commitment so far, at least at the time that we tape this. But who else do you think is going to jump on board after this weekend? Tap in. Let us know. Comment section below. Another big recruiting weekend in Austin. We're going to go behind the scenes of this one with Justin Wells of Inside Texas. couple big updates, plus a new prediction in favor of Texas. We got Horns Insider Justin Wells on this video. We're going to cover it all. But first, hit subscribe to the On3 Recruits channel. We're talking Texas Longhorn recruiting all offseason long. So go on, jump on board, On3 Recruits. All right, let's bring on Justin Wells from Inside Texas. And let's start with a major flip target that was on campus. Really one of the best edge prospects in the country, Javian Hilson. Now he's committed to FSU after flipping his commitment to, from Alabama. So we know that he's into this recruiting thing and he's visited UF. Now he's visiting Texas. He's, he'll have UCF and FSU later this month. But what effect did the visit to Texas have on this recruitment? It had a strong effect. You know, a lot of times we won't talk about out-of-state pro uh, prospects until they get on campus when it comes to Texas, until you see them hit the boots on the ground in Austin. You know, it, you really don't dive too deep into a recruitment just yet. Hilson was there, and he absolutely loved it. They showed him how he's going to be used. They showed him how he can fit in that scheme. I think Steve Sarkeesian and Pete Kwiatkowski were, were really good about just kind of presenting what they can do for them, what they can do for him, and, and how he can fit in that mm -hmm. in that in that uh, in that format. The thing with Hilson though is, I think he loved it. You know, he he talked to our Joe Cook a, a lot uh, after the visit. I think he absolutely loved it. I think that Florida State OV is still the one that looms large, though. I, I think that's going to tell us a lot about what we need to know about Hilson and, and, and his decision. Uh, but ultimately, Texas put it all out on the table for him. Uh, Hilson loves that he has an idea of, of the fit of, of how he'll you know be in Austin and, and, and things of that sort. He loved the, how the players and the coaches interacted with each other. He, he, he saw what he called a real culture. And so I, I think they made an impression uh, but I think it's it, it's going to be tough. Florida State's going to be a tough one to knock off, especially when he's committed there, and that's going to be one of his last OVs. Uh, that's where we're going to know. We'll get more clarity after he leaves Ta Tallahassee. Yeah, and like you said, it kind of, for these out-of-state guys, you're right. Until they show up on campus, you don't really know where Texas stands. But now that Texas has hosted him, do you think that the uh, – the interest is reciprocal. Do you think that he is a top target for the Horns coaching staff? Yes. Yes. Watch his tape. He has to be. <laughs> the guy's fantastic. Look, they've got Lance Jackson in this class for 2025 at Edge. They love Marco Jones out of California, another edge that they're battling with, with Michigan for. I think Hilson's in that conversation now. Yeah. I think Texas is going big on edge in this cycle, okay? They're, they're only going to go two or three, and they're going to be pr primary guys, big targets. I feel like they're cherry-picking edge in 2025, similar to how they got Colin Simmons and Zeno Umiazulu last year. They're in this recruitment. I just worry about Florida State right now. I think they're going to have to hold on loosely. Yep, coming out of it, you know, it seems like a two-team battle. FSU, Texas, in this one, Hilson said he'll make a quote-unquote final decision. He'll inform the coaching staff's what he's going to do sometime, I think, in July. So this one, yeah. far from over. All right, move on to another intriguing visitor, Michael Terry the third, the number one athlete in America. He's from San Antonio, Texas. He's 6'3", 211 pounds. Normally, our number one athlete, I mean, let's be honest, our number one athlete is usually a QB that projects <laughs> on the next level to be yeah. a running back or wide receiver or maybe even a DB. But Michael Terry, I mean, he walks into the room. We saw him in Nashville. He looks like a rush end. He looks like an outside linebacker. He looks like somebody that, you know, isn't going to fit into a wide receiver running back, but it seems like he wants to play offense. Where does Texas see him fitting in? That's the big question. You know, uh, in Nashville, he talked up Texas. He yeah. talked up Nebraska and Texas Tech uh, because Steve Sarkeesian had kept that relationship going. I think that was the key. No, he wasn't a running back or no, he wasn't a wide receiver. But Sark viewed him as a take. You know, he, he it, it wasn't really about positions. This weekend, there wasn't a lot of clarity when it came to positions. From what I, I gathered talking to sources, 
It's an athlete. That's the that's his designation. They're not talking about, hey, you need to be looking at tight end or you need to be looking at edge or or outside linebacker. Mm -hmm. You're an athlete is what they're telling them. We want you. They think right. he's a great person and even better football player. They love his family. I mean, they really connected. I, I, you know, Michael would talked about how he, he again, similar to Hilson, he loved the, the culture there. They're, 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 they're building something there. Listen, Terry has loved Texas for years. This isn't not anything new. The, the, you know, they're only 45 minutes down the road. And I think Texas, you know, if, if they push all their chips in, I think they're the leader here. But that coming off of this official visit was big because everyone was asking what position, what's his preference? Texas flat out told him, look, we're not worried about a position right now. We're worried about you at athlete. We think you're an athlete. We think you're going to be a guy that can play on either side of the ball. You know, and, and I look at tight end a little bit, Josh, because they've you. got one in the boat in Emory Winston out of Calhoun, Georgia. That one is probably a soft commit right now he's took a, a trip to auburn he's taking trips to central florida they're in on jaspers kiati armstrong they're in on spring to um nick townsend and so whatever and they want to and they had caleb edwards on campus this weekend as well the tight end out of el dorado hills in california so i think terry might fit more in that tight end type role but texas was adamant hey you're an athlete we want you in this program we want you to be a part of this program we're not going to worry about the position right now. We'll figure that out when you get on campus. Yeah, exactly. With those measurables and that kind of athleticism, you just figure it out when you get them on campus. And I'll be honest with you, I don't think Michael Terry knows yet which position he wants to play. We we're sitting in exactly. national interview with him. Steve Wiltfong spoke to him on the other side of the room. He, I heard him. He said, I want to play running back. He comes and sits down with me, and I ask him what position he wants to play on the next level. He says wide receiver. And that was about three minutes apart from each other. So it just goes to show you that sometimes, hey, this kind of these recruitments, they change on a dime. Even the position that a, a recruit wants to play could change in a matter of minutes, just like it did when we interviewed him in Nashville. Uh, all right. So do you agree with the recruiting prediction machine that says Texas leads coming out of this visit? I think it's hard not to. I really do, especially when, when when he when his family got some clarity. They they wanted to know where Texas envisioned him, and Texas was 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 to the point. We think you're an athlete. We we they know you're an athlete. He's the number one rated in the country, and 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 that's to me. I, I think Texas could be considered maybe a, a soft, quiet leader, but Nebraska has been the one that has really revved up this recruitment. And, you know, he's already taken his official there. Yeah. And so, I, you know, Texas Tech is still in the mix as well. I think there's a number of – I think Texas A&M is still shooting their shot. I honestly – I don't know if he has a leader right now. I think he's going to go home. I think he's going to sit with his family and start to figure some stuff out and possibly make a decision in the next month or two. Mm -hmm. But I, I think after this weekend, Texas positioned themselves very well for his decision. All right. Let's end it on a new prediction in favor of the Longhorns. And it's a big one. Now, this is for the 2026 class. Now, normally, I don't think I'd get on here in June and talk about a 2026 prediction. But, like I said, it's a big one. Number three offensive tackle in America, John Turntine. You predict him to Texas. He's from Fort Worth. Uh, but why now? Why put the pick in now? And when do you think he decides? Yeah, uh, the North Crowley kid is just a budding superstar. We've watched him grow over the last year, and he gets bigger and taller and stronger every time he comes on campus. Mm -hmm. And that's another thing. He comes to Texas a lot. a lot. He's been on campus four times since the junior day in January. His family absolutely loves Coach Sark and Coach Flood in this, in, in this town. They absolutely love what the program is doing, how they're working with the offensive linemen, how they're putting guys in the league, how they're developing. You're seeing, you know, Texas doesn't go in the portal a whole lot for the O-line. Kyle Flood likes to likes to, 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 to bring them in and grow them. And, yeah. and Turntine has the most moldable clay of, of any of these guys in the country. He is just fantastic. I think it's Texas by miles. I'm not sure second place is even close. They have done so well. They identified him really early, Josh. This was an early eval that they hit out of the park. They solidified that foundation of how important he was. He's a priority. His parents absolutely love it. John loves it. Every time I see him, I swear he's getting bigger, stronger, but that smile always gets better. 
John Turntine in Texas makes way too much sense. Uh, you know, I feel like he's going to eventually be a five star and he's going to be one of the headline guys in the class of 2026 for the Horns. Mm. Texas fans are going to love to hear what you just said. Speaking of Texas fans, let me know. Comment section below. Do you feel like JV and Hilson's going to flip after this visit? And also, Michael Terry, what position do you like him at? Let us know. Comment section below. Well, you've made it to the end of today's video, but there's hundreds more videos on the On3 Recruits channel for you to check out. And also, while you're here, hit subscribe.